right. So welcome. Hello and welcome to On It, Not In It, the interview series. I'm your host, Todd Eppert, and today I'm joined by Ron Parisi, who is the Chief Executive Officer at CPA On Fire. Ron, thank you so much for joining us. Would you like to kick us off with a brief background on how you, uh, what you do and who you are? Yeah, sure. Hey, Todd, I uh, appreciate having me. Um, look forward to, uh, I always look forward to talking entrepreneurial stuff and I uh, love the name of your podcast. We talk about uh, this concept all the time with my clients. So I'm Ron Parisi. I'm a uh, CPA, uh, former attorney, former uh, corporate attorney. Uh, CPA on Fire is my company and we offer uh, VCFO services, uh, back office financial operations for uh, entrepreneurs. Um, and, you know, one of our subspecialties is the online space. So online entrepreneurs, particularly high growth uh, is our is our subspecialty. Folks who are, you know, two, five, 10 xing their business in a very short period of time, helping them navigate the waters that come with that kind of growth and scale. So. Awesome. L love that, Ron. And that's obviously... I uh, love having you on the podcast because many, many entrepreneurs try to do their own financial work. And at some point they got to let somebody professional do it for them. And that's what you're providing services for entrepreneurs. So fantastic. So just curious, you mentioned you used to be a corporate attorney. Uh, so what was the initial spark? What inspired you to become an entrepreneur or start your own business? Yeah, I was going to say it's a uh, long trail, but I'll, I'll shorten it up, right? Come out of, uh, come out of undergrad. Uh, everybody talks about the big four accounting firms. Uh, so I joined one, uh, PwC. I worked in PwC both in their audit department as well as their international tax department. And uh, left, uh, went to law school, uh, practiced for about five years um, during you know the ups and downs of the, of, uh, the I guess the early two thousands or mid two thousands, and. Um, <clears throat> Really, uh, and then actually went from the corporate or the uh, the uh, being a corporate attorney to the corporate world while I was a corporate executive. Uh, that brought me out to the Bay Area, California. And then eight years ago, uh, my wife's originally from Ohio. Uh, she said, hey, Ron, I, I don't know if I want to be out here while we raise our kids. I want to move back to Ohio. And uh, I had already felt it, you know, uh, both practicing law and being a corporate executive, like, you know, things weren't moving as fast as I wanted them to move. I was frustrated. I was, I, I really do like managing people. I was managing uh, like 35 people when I left. I love that aspect. I love the leadership aspect of the corporate world, but I, you know, it took me a little while to figure out I was an entrepreneur. So uh, eight years ago uh, or over the last eight years, I bought two accounting firms and really uh, kind of use my experience uh, both as a corporate attorney and my time at PwC, uh, bringing, you know, that kind of experience to the entrepreneur and uh, in, in the financial, in the financial operations. And uh, maybe we'll talk about this later, but from my vantage point, uh, you know, you have your, your product, right? Your product or service, you have your marketing and sales, and basically, when you talk, uh, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you focus ex almost exclusively on that, but you you kind of fail to see the uh, financial operations as a third stool. And obviously, that's kind of my area. So obviously, I mind that. But uh, the clients I work with, you know, all it's all about. Well, I just got to get the product right. I got to get the service right. If only I could hit that right Google algorithm, or I need I need my marketing and sales team to do it, but. Uh, what comes down to is, uh, you know, profitability, profitability, positive cash flow, fuel, fuel growth, fuel the business, and allows you to be, you know, to make a huge on, you know, huge impact on the world. So, uh, so that's, you know, in a nutshell, uh, you know, I discovered I was an entrepreneur and then I discovered I'm best at helping entrepreneurs. So, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It's funny. You mentioned that as I've talked to a lot of people and myself included, you realize you're an entrepreneur way later in life, right? And it's like, oh, I wasted a lot of time doing corporate work. <laughs> I should have been doing this the whole time. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So this may you may need to go back in time a little bit to remember some of these. But what kind of what are some common misconceptions about running a business that maybe you had, and how did you address them? Oh man, yeah. You, know, you always hear like, uh, if I knew if I knew how hard it was, I would have never start in the first place. But for me. Uh, 
you know, what, what drew me to entrepreneurship is freedom. And, uh, that's what keeps me in the fight every day. Uh, and, uh, freedom's not, is not free. Uh, you know, you have to work very hard for it and we are only products of the value, uh, you know, we create in this world. So, um, I think that's the hardest part is, uh, you know, understanding that, uh, you know, while you have control over your business, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, you you test your ideas, your products or services against the check writers, your clients. And, uh, you know, that that necessarily mean that, you know, you get to do your own thing. Uh, so that pull that pull or uh, push uh, aspect of running your own business, making it your own, but also, you know, having to create. Uh, a unique uh, value set to bring to bring into the marketplace. I think that's the the crux of it. But man, that's that's the hard part for me. So, yeah, uh, it sounds like you're talking a little bit about the fact that it's really common for entrepreneurs to start a business and then you kind of do whatever your clients ask you to do, and so you can get a little bit off track. And if you don't really have a really focus, it's really hard to be. If you're not focusing on anything, then you really don't do anything, right? You're not known for anything. So that's. I think that's what I hear you saying, Ron. So yeah, I was gonna say that just to summarize that, right? It, or bring it to the next point is is that you know it's the poor push, right? So you can go out there and create this great course or create this restaurant experience. But no, no, no one ever comes, right? Or vice versa, <laughs> you know, you listen to your clients and they want you to do X, Y, and Z, and maybe you're only good at Z, you know, and you fall on your face on. So it's just. You know, making sure you have an identity, but also, you know, being being open to solving your client's problems and being there as a solution and getting really good at that. So that's what I mean by that push or pull, because uh, you can't be a wet sponge to your clients, but first you can't live in a bubble and do your own thing. So Right, right. So I want to ask this question from the perspective of what's going on at CPA on Fire. You've been at this now for a couple of years. You've obviously brought incredible experience to the table great professional background, education, experience in the industry, you know, like you said, buying some businesses and things like that. But what are your biggest challenges today in your current organization? Oh, man, there's a there's a long list. But, it, you know, I think we we suffer or experience every, what everybody else experiences. And that's talent, you know, trying to bring top tier talent over to our team. Um, you know, we've been actually been successful this year, bringing some really nice uh, you know, talent onto our team, but struggling for talent is one. Uh, but I, from my, from my perspective, um, uh, you know, what keeps me up at night is just what the future holds. You know, I think that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the exact year when, uh, electricity started, you know, make it's making its way across the United States. But I think that's kind of where, where we're at today. I mean, I don't know what to expect, uh, tomorrow, three years from today, five, 10 years. Like, I think the world is going to, is, uh, is going to change very rapidly in certain respects. And, uh, for me, you know, I think it was that Gretzky, you know, don't skate to the puck, skate to where the puck's going. And that, the, the thing that keeps me up at night is where's the puck going and trying to create, uh, you know, our company to be creative, visionary, and try to try to be where the puck's going. But, uh, yeah. You know, we could have a whole other discussion on that. So, <laughs> well, actually, you know, that answer actually kind of could take me to a couple of different questions. So, the the next question I'll ask is: You're right. A business environment is constantly evolving. I mean, three years ago, we had this pandemic thing that, you know, completely flipped us on our backs. And what's going to happen now? And we all had to pivot in some way. And and that I don't think that's changing, right? Like you said, it's going to constantly be changing in the future. So. Would you mind sharing a strategy or two that you're using uh, to try to remain innovative in your company? Uh, well, geez, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I, I was just saying, I think the, you know, I'll just harken back to one. I grew up in the New York, New Jersey area, right? Right across the street from the Hudson, from Manhattan. And, uh, you know, during my age, uh, the taxi medallions, right? They were worth <laughs> so much money. Um and it was so hard to get them. And then obviously, slowly but surely, you know, the different uh, services came about, whether it's black car, Uber, Lyft, and uh, and just absolutely turn that industry. And I just see, you know, what 
you know, what industries are going to be disrupted and is the financial space, you know, how are we going to be, you know, Bitcoin, uh, not Bitcoin, but um, blockchain rather. Uh, what's that, what's the impact that's going to have? Obviously these large language models are just, I just watched that uh, the latest on uh, chat GPT turbo. Uh, I mean, just amazing stuff going on. So what are we doing, right? I mean, we're just uh, double downing on on uh, technology, on tools. And uh, I always, you know, for us and what I talk about our, with our team is that while some of the things that we're doing, you know, may be dis disrupted, I don't think anyone's going to teach entrepreneurs how to run their businesses. Yeah. And that we have to focus on the value you, we, we create because that's our highest value. Our highest value is that advisory, you know, one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, that's, that's the highest use and the highest value. And then two is we do everything in digit in, uh, dig in uh, visual form. We build dashboards in visual form. And, and while I think that can be overtaken, but just what, what can't be overtaken is really understanding the profit drivers of the business and being able to marry those with the, with the visual and the KPIs. So that's kind of like where I'm going is like, double downing on relationships, double downing on teaching people, helping people run their business uh, optimally. And then the fourth piece is just really customizable uh, dashboards for entrepreneurs to be, to make very good, quick business decisions. So. Yeah, I love that. So you're talking about ways you're going to try to push back against this AI and chat GPT. This is all these things are coming that could be disruptors to a lot of industries. I love the fact that you pointed back to the one-to-one -one relationship, right? Uh, that is uh, obviously that's something that you you can never replace, even in Zoom calls. I mean, I know VCFO, obviously you're virtual, uh, but mm -hmm. Zoom calls are way better than phone calls, right? Um, and then face-to-face, -face, if you can do it in front of people, it can even be even more powerful. Uh, but yeah, I love that. I love the fact that you're kind of staking a claim on that space um, and totally agree that that's something that AI is never going to replace, the human interaction side. Um, it might be able to tell us what we're thinking, <laughs> but it certainly can't have emotions and the intuition we have and all the experience we bring to our clients when it comes to helping them out. So I love that. So and then, you know, our, our clients are going to change, right? Or, yeah. You know, our clients are, certain clients are going to be disrupted, but then there's going to be other people who are really going to excel in the new environment. So, you know, just being willing to be open-minded. Uh, I, I don't know about, you know, the business coaching space. Um, I think you guys are pretty progressive, <laughs> but you know, when I I just went to the accounting, the Ohio accounting show and, uh, you know, just a lot of people who are very, you know, think that the compliance piece of the art of the accounting industry is going to be here forever and just not really willing to, to kind of look forward. So it's, you know, I think, you know, so I mean, we're hopefully we're a little ahead of our, of our industry. Uh, so. Okay. Well, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try, we absolutely, we're, yeah, as business coaches, we're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to uh, stay on top of the market changes that are happening and trying to stay innovative. So good point. Uh, so, okay. So you also talked about the future a little bit. So you mentioned you've been thinking about that and it keeps you up at night. So um, you don't have to give me any specifics. I don't want you to unveil anything that would be, you know, confidential in any way, but do you have any goals or future plans or what's the next step for you in your entrepreneurial journey? Oh, wow. Yeah. We, um, you know, it's just, it's kind of, uh, leaps and then, uh, kind of settle, leap, settle, uh, get your footing. So we, uh, we just spent the last year, uh, revamping, you know, our product service offering and, uh, we're going, we're going deeper, uh, with a lot of our services. Uh, we're going to go full, full back office. And when I see back off, I'm not, I'm not talking about family wealth. I'm talking about, you know, kind of to the entrepreneur, you know, everything that they they worry about or they need to do from a financial operations standpoint, we we try to build a team for that. And uh, so I, we're, we're looking for a big growth period in 2024. Uh, and just, you know, from my vantage point, um, I'm sure you feel the same way, Todd. Is that you know our clients need us the the marketplace needs us uh, the the pain you know uh, you know that book the why right is that the pain that I feel is entrepreneurs work so hard right they work so hard and the majority of them 
or I would say almost all of them don't make uh, the profits. They don't see the rewards they should be seeing because of the inefficiencies in their, uh, you know, all across their business, but particularly in their, in their uh, financial operations. So for me, I, I just, you know, I feel the pain of these entrepreneurs that work extremely hard. And then at the end of the year, they wonder where all the money went. And uh, so I know there's an opportunity to help these uh, entrepreneurs. And, you know, again, we're just trying to get uh, the word out. We're trying to really, you know, one, we revamp the, the marketing and then uh, we continue to work our processes. My team will hear Starbucks, Starbucks, Starbucks. You know, we want to be kind of that Starbucks backstage. You know, we really just want to have a process for everything and be as uh, consistent as possible with our service. I'm, I'm big on, uh, on, on being a concierge level and having, you know, very high standards for the services that we do. So, uh, we're always working on back office processes and, um, things like that. So I think the, the future's, uh, super bright for CPA on fire. And then we got a couple of things up our sleeve that we'll probably have in our three or five year plan that, uh, we have, we're not ready to announce, but, uh, look for, look for things and yeah, look for, look for some from announcements. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And I, I, I don't want you to unveil everything that's in the future, but I do appreciate you sharing some goals that you have. That's great. So, so final question, what advice would you offer to aspiring entrepreneurs who are just getting their journey started, or maybe they started and they're kind of bumping against the wall that's causing them to have some success? What's the, some advice you give? I think uh, I was, I've been uh, reflecting on this for 2023. 2023 was an extremely hard year um in the online advertising space i think uh google's algorithms there's a whole you know uh facebook um a lot of things changed for entrepreneurs and they it was a really up and down year i mean i would i would get calls the how you know the house is on fire the sky is falling and then you know maybe two weeks later oh no we, we okay we're back on track you know we're still getting the uh the prospects coming in the door the clients coming in the door uh so just understand that, um, you know, your circum, and again, we work with high growth entrepreneurs, right? So like, just remember, you know, if you're a budding entrepreneur, you're a side hustler that really wants to get in this, you're going to have, uh, you know, ebbs and flows to the business and you got to persevere. Uh, that's number one. And then number two is as soon as you can hire the team around you, you know, hire the business coach, hi hire uh, you know, your, your VCFO hire, whoever you need that's outside of, you know, your unique skill sets, whatever you bring to the business, uh, as, far, as soon as you can afford them, hire everybody else around you and keep, keep yourself in that unique, in your unique skill sets. So those are kind of the two pieces of advice I give. Yeah. I love that. Love that. I, I always, often, when I'm working on my clients, one of the things we work on is what's your area of awesome right? Yeah. Where are you the best? <laughs> Let's maximize that time. So, well, well, hey, Ron, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for sharing so much about your journey, about CPA on fire. Uh, thank you for your time. And thank you for uh, being willing to take this time with us. And to everyone watching, I look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thanks again, Ron. I appreciate being with you, Todd. Thanks, bud.